as I described for you, um, the purpose of the circle is for us to sit here each as part of the human family and to share experiences that may have impacted you. And we're looking specifically at the issue of violence and trauma occurring in Milwaukee. In August 2009, I lost my dad to a violent crime. He was a homicide victim in the rear of his home after parking his truck. They suspect that it was a, an armed robbery where he was robbed and it went bad. He was shot and he passed right there in the back of the back of his house in the alleyway. I was getting lost, you know. Just death itself was sinking in on me. I never really told this story completely in detail, not even to my mom. It's the summer that I turned 13 years old. I played with a girl she was a year older than I was. We played all summer long. We were both products of broken homes, single moms, both had stepfathers that we really didn't care much for. She had got home from school, and I had gotten home later, and come over, come over, come over. So I go over there, and her parents were fighting, but it was pretty much the norm. I didn't think anything of it. I got downstairs, started to walk across the street. She comes running outside. Billy, please come back, please come back, please come back. They're fighting again. So I turn back around, go up the stairs, and her mom has the butcher knife, and she goes up and stabs him. Right dead center of his chest. And I remember seeing him fall. And I looked at her, and she looked at me, and I looked at her mom, and I just ran. Ran across the street, I just left. Ran in the house, ran in my room, shut the door, didn't say anything to my mom. I remember just staring outside the window. When I was two, my father did him, uh, killed the woman in the South. You know, I was maybe five years old. I remember people saying, oh, he's gonna be gay, he's gonna be this, he's gonna be that. And I would hear a lot, he's just like his father, he looks like his father, so on and so forth. To me, I'm thinking they saying I am my father. So to me, I was, who is my father now? So then I find out he was this extremely violent individual. He was, he was a robber and so on and so forth. So um, I, I thought that that's how I would be. I was very violent with women. You know, I was controlling because inside I knew a lot of things I did was wrong, but I, in, but the outside, the world I lived in, the way I was believing was wrong. That's not the way where I lived that was. So I didn't fit in, and so it caused me more and more confusion. So when I started going to jail, catching these different cases, like again, extremely violent, when I, I would stay, I would spend most of my time in the hole. And I was always comfortable, isolated, because I, I could take off those masks. I could be myself. My husband and I have three children who are all grown, Jay, Linda, and Dan. 2004 was a, a year of highs and very low lows for our whole family. Um, Jay, who was 34, got engaged to um, his soulmate, the love of his life. He had done his day shift and had volunteered to take a colleague's um, night shift from midnight to seven, eight in the morning. And on the way to where they were going to do surveillance, he stopped at a gas station because he was very tired and went in, got his coffee, came out, and as he walked back to his car, he was confronted by two young men. One had a gun pointed at him and the other walked asked him and then turned and felt for Jay's wallet. Um, when he felt for his wallet, he felt his gun and said to the, his partner with the gun, dude has a gun. And Jay said, I'm police, I'm police, don't. And he sh was shot. We were called at 1.20 in the morning I will never forget that phone call. He really 
fought to stay with us. But on November 5th at 10.50 in the morning, he was declared brain dead. 